Hello, and welcome to All Top Fives. With the recent release of The Conjuring 2, I thought I'd take a look at five of the most intriguing cases taken on by Ed and Lorraine Warren, husband and wife demonologists who investigated thousands of paranormal occurrences throughout their lives. Whether you believe they're genuine or not, the Warrens have made a name for themselves in this field. Number 5. Perron Family Haunting In 1970, the Perron family, headed by Roger and Carolyn, moved into a country house in Harrisville, Rhode Island. They began experiencing severe paranormal activity, most often focused on the mother, Carolyn. One of the first hauntings saw her waking up one night to a grey woman with a lolling head groaning, Get out! Get out! I'll drive you out with death and gloom! There were also several poltergeist incidents, such as objects floating, loud bumps and scrapes at night, and even a levitating bed. But the scariest of all was the spirit, reportedly, of Bathsheba Thayer, who had lived nearby in the early 1800s. It was said that Bathsheba, who lost three of her children very young, was a witch who sacrificed them to the devil, though there's no historical evidence for Bathsheba's crimes. She allegedly possessed Carolyn after physically assaulting her on numerous occasions. Ed and Lorraine Warren were called in to investigate. Once they arrived at the Perron's house, Lorraine immediately felt a dark presence from within Carolyn, and the pair began cleansing the home and the family spiritually, trying to drive out the evil. It's this cleansing that the 2013 film The Conjuring was based upon. A fairly decent haunted house style horror film if you ask me. Lorraine Warren stated recently that the movie was very accurate in its depiction of the events. Unfortunately, the Warrens' rituals didn't work, and the hauntings apparently became worse and worse. The Perrons couldn't afford to move until 1980, when they finally sold the house and moved far away to the state of Georgia. It's said that the paranormal occurrences did continue, but they were much more tolerable and less debilitating than before. The Perron family haunting is not a great testimonial for the Warrens, but it's interesting to hear a case where they only made things worse, rather than managing to save everyone all the time. Number 4. Smurl Haunting Jack and Janet Smurl lived in West Pittston, Pennsylvania, and between 1974 and 1989, that's 15 years, reportedly experienced a demon haunting their home. They claimed the demon was the source of loud noises and strong, evil smells around the house. Even more severe, the demon once flung their dog against a wall, shoved one of their daughters down the stairs, and, even more disturbingly, sexually assaulted Jack Smurl, the husband, more than once. These seriously scary events are what led to the family calling upon Ed and Lorraine Warren, as they were at their wit's end. Ed has gone on record stating that the demon inhabiting the house was very powerful, when they first attempted to get it to leave by playing religious music and praying, it caused furniture to shake violently. Later on in the investigation, Ed experienced sudden cold spots around the home and saw a dark mass at one point. The demon apparently left a mirror message reading, Get out, for the Warrens, and they claimed to have recorded the banging and knocking sounds allegedly caused by the demon on tape. The Warrens investigated for months, but it's unclear how truthful their claims were, or how successful they were in driving out the demon. Members of the Roman Catholic Church visited the Smurls' home as well, and although blessing the house and staying over on several occasions, no demonic activity was witnessed. The Warrens' claims were also criticised as a hoax, a charade, a ghost story, and Jack Smurl admitted later that he had undergone surgery to remove water from his brain in 1983 as a result of childhood meningitis. This may cast some doubt on the stories of paranormal activity, but really, only the Warrens and the Smurls really know what happened. What do you think? Number 3. Annabelle I've spoken about Annabelle before in my Most Haunted and Cursed Dolls video, so this is going to cover roughly the same subject. One of the most famous of all the Warrens cases is arguably that of Annabelle, the Raggedy Ann doll. In 1970, Annabelle was bought as a 28th birthday present for a woman called Donna by her mother. Soon after receiving the doll, Donna found that it would move around her apartment by itself. She even began finding messages written by the doll on parchment, which Donna didn't keep in the house. 
Indeed, a medium claimed that the spirit of a seven-year-old girl named Annabelle Higgins resided in the doll. Donna tried to accept this explanation, but one day Annabelle allegedly attempted to strangle Donna's friend, and this was the final straw. Donna contacted the Warrens about the doll. When Ed and Lorraine Warren studied Annabelle, they agreed that she was haunted, but not by a human spirit. They claimed that the doll was possessed by a demon, and a dangerous one at that. The Warrens performed an exorcism and took the doll away from Donna's apartment. They claimed that Annabelle's exorcism hadn't worked properly though, as on their way home with the doll in their car, their steering and brakes failed, nearly causing them to crash. Eventually, after several nights of Annabelle escaping padlocked cases, the Warrens built a special reinforced glass case. It joined all the other occult and cursed items in this locked room, which is now available to visit as an occult museum. Annabelle has never escaped her case since, but the demon's curse seems to live on. It's said that many visitors to the museum who taunt the doll bring horrible luck and accidents upon themselves soon after leaving. Recently, a movie, Annabelle, was made based on these events by the same people who made The Conjuring. Again, we only have the Warrens' word on the truth of this case, but it's definitely a high-profile story that hasn't really been disproven yet. Number 2. The Trial of Arne Cheyenne Johnson Another demonic case, but in many ways a very different investigation. It was a landmark court case in the USA, the first of its kind in which innocence was claimed for the defendant on the grounds of demonic possession. In November 1981, in Connecticut, Arne Cheyenne Johnson was convicted of killing his landlord. That previous February, Johnson, with his girlfriend Debbie Glatzel and some relatives, went for lunch with their landlord where they drank alcohol heavily. After lunch, the landlord, very drunk, began to get aggressive. It was then that Johnson, growling like an animal, revealed a knife and stabbed their landlord over and over again, viciously, killing him. The very next day, as Johnson was held on bail at a local correctional centre, Lorraine Warren stepped in, stating that Johnson was in a state of possession when he had committed the crime. It turned out that the Warrens had been investigating the Glatzels previously, as Debbie's 11-year-old brother David had described and elicited increasingly severe disturbances. It started with him seeing the figure of an old man in a new rental home who terrified David by pushing him out of nowhere. The man threatened the Glatzel family if they moved into the house, and David had further visions of the old man as a beastly demon, uttering Latin phrases and saying he'd steal his soul. The Warrens were called in, and they witnessed David developing scratches, bruises, and he began speaking in tongues and growling Bible passages. Lorraine saw a black mist appear next to David at one point, and they attempted exorcisms on him. She recalls that David levitated, stopped breathing, and even vaguely predicted that his sister's boyfriend, Johnson, would later commit that murder. An exorcism by Catholic priests eventually drove the demon out of David. Stories are unclear from this point as to why and how the demon then possessed Johnson and drove him to kill their new landlord, but Debbie claims that Johnson showed a lot of similar behaviour to David before the crime occurred. The judge presiding over the Johnson case, also famously known as the Devil Made Me Do It case, dismissed the defence of demonic possession as it couldn't be proven. However, Johnson was only instructed to serve five years of an up to 20 year sentence. The reason that this case is so interesting, for me anyway, is that it's one of the few cases where the Warrens actually had more at stake than a local family haunting or possession. They actually played a part in a wider legal case surrounding a homicide, and you'd think that if they were frauds, they'd try and distance themselves very quickly from such proceedings. Who knows, though? Number 1. Enfield Poltergeist I've saved this last case for number 1 to mark the release of The Conjuring 2, based on the events of this very Enfield Poltergeist case. Not in America this time, but in Enfield, England, between 1977 and 79. Peggy Hodgson had called the police after her children were complaining about moving furniture and knocking from within the walls. One policeman who visited the Hodgsons claimed to witness a chair sliding across the floor. The family later claimed hearing demon-like voices, banging sounds, and household objects and toys being thrown about by unexplainable forces. The children were even levitated. 
The media was drawn to the occurrences, and there are many witnesses claiming that what happened was genuine. In 1978, the Warrens flew across the pond to visit the Hodgsons. They described the atmosphere as dangerous and threatening, and claimed to have borne witness to levitations, teleportations, and dematerializations of people and objects. The Warrens also said that they recorded spirit voices speaking in the rooms of the house. Janet Hodgson, one of the children involved in the case, later as an adult admitted that she had faked some of the supposedly paranormal disturbances, and some of this was criticised at the time by certain investigators as well. Ed Warren was also criticised for his tendency to exaggerate and even fabricate some of these incidents, and was said to take a traditional haunting and claim that it was something darker, more demonic. Still, fake levitation and young girl's pranks aside, there were harder events to explain away, many requiring Janet to be skilled in ventriloquism, and very, very devious with sleight of hand and imagination to have faked them. The Warrens stand by their belief that the Enfield case was genuine, however, and it remains one of the most famous of their investigations, marked by the 2016 release The Conjuring 2. And that's it from all top fives for this week. Ed passed away in 2006, but Lorraine still tours the USA, speaking about her experiences, and co-authoring books and consulting on movies based on past cases. They're possibly the world's most prominent demonologists and paranormal investigators, but is there any truth in their thousands of cases, including the Amityville haunting in which they played a small part? That's up to you to decide, I'm afraid. I'd love to know what you think in the comments, but remember to be polite and considerate when posting your comments. I'd prefer it if we all get along and don't start any flame wars. Just be polite. If you've enjoyed this video, you can click the like button, because that helps me out and it helps other people find these videos in the searches as well. I release a new video every single Tuesday, so you can subscribe to get those straight into your inbox. So, peace and love to each and every one of you, and I'll see you all next time on All Top Fives.